Hi, I am Sofian Makhlouf. In this video, we will study the convergence of C0 means, which is C sub n equals the sum of A sub 1 plus and so on until A sub n all over n. So C sub n is the C0 mean of the sequence A sub n. So we will show if limit of a sub n equals l, then limit of c sub n equals l. We will show if this sequence a sub n converge to l, then this sequence c sub n also converge to l using the definition of convergence using epsilon. Before doing the proof of the Cesaro theorem, I remind the definition of a limit of sequence using epsilon. So the limit of the sequence u sub n as n approaches infinity equals L if for all epsilon greater than zero there exists a big N integer such that for all little n greater than or equal to big N, we have the distance between u sub n and L is less than epsilon. So this inequality hold under this condition. Before doing the proof, I give the strategy of the proof. So we have two cases. L equals zero or L different of zero. So the first case L equals zero by using epsilon by using the definition. The second case L different of zero by the first case. After doing the proof, the question is, is the converse true of this statement? We will show that the converse is not true. If Cn converge to L, we don't have An converge to L. Now we start the proof. L can be zero or not. So the first case, L is zero. Let epsilon greater than zero. We have limit of A sub n equals zero. So by definition of limit, there exists a big N integer such that for all little n greater than or equal to big N, we have the absolute value of a sub n is less than epsilon over 2. So this inequality hold under this condition. Let little n greater than or equal to big N, we have the absolute value of a sub n is less than epsilon over 2. So the absolute value of C sub n is equal to this sum over n, absolute value, is less than 1 over n times, here we use the triangular inequality many times. So here the, the first term, a1 until a uh, sub n, plus the absolute value of, of each remaining term, This absolute value of this sum is a constant because big N is a constant. So this is A. A is this sum with absolute value. Each of those terms is less than epsilon over 2 because here each index is greater than big N. So this is 
less than 1 over n or each term is less than or uh, is less than epsilon over 2 so how many epsilon over 2 here we have n minus big n plus 1 plus 1 equals n minus big n term so the absolute value of c sub n is less than a over n plus the number of term and uh, under n times epsilon over 2 and this is less than 1 so the absolute value of c sub n is less than a over n plus epsilon over 2 so we have the absolute value of c sub n is less than or equal to a over n plus epsilon over 2. We know that the limit of a over n is 0, so there exists m integer greater than or equal to big N, such that for all little n greater than or equal to big M, we have the absolute value of a over n less than epsilon over 2. So let n greater than big M. We have this inequality and this inequality. So here a over n is less than epsilon over 2. So C uh, sub n, the absolute value, is less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is uh, epsilon. Plus for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big M integer such that for all little n greater than or equal to big M, we have the distance between C sub n and zero is, is less than epsilon. So the limit of C sub n equals zero. So when we have the limit of a sub n equals 0, so the limit of the C0 mean of a sub n is also 0. Second case, L is not equal to 0. We will use the first case. Here, a sub n converge to L, so we need a nice sequence that converge to 0 to apply the first case. This sequence is B sub n equals a sub n minus L. So here B sub n converges to 0. D sub n is uh, the C0 mean of B sub n, but this is B sub n, so D, D sub n is equal to this. Here we put uh, the AK together and the L together, so this is equal to uh, the sum of ak over n minus nl over n. But this is c sub n. This is the c zero mean of a sub n. So d sub n equals c sub n minus l. We know that the limit of a sub n equals L, but this is b sub n, so the limit of b sub n equals 0. So the limit of its c0 means equals 0 by the first case. But d sub n equals c sub n minus l, so the limit of c sub n equals l. Here c sub n is the c0 mean of the sequence a sub n equals 1 over n times sum from k equals 1 to n of a k. We have if limit of a sub n equals l, then the limit of c sub n equals l. So the question, 
is the converse of this statement true? The converse is false. So we need a counterexample. So the famous counterexample is the sequence a sub n equals negative 1 on the power of n. C sub n equals 1 over n times this geometric sum. We know that when x different of 1, the geometric sum is equal to this. So here we have x equals minus 1. So minus 1. Here minus 1 on the power of n. And here 1 minus minus 1 is 2. So here 2 over n. So the limit of C sub n equals 0. But uh, A sub n diverge. So this is A sub n. Here A sub 2n equals 1 and A sub 2n plus 1 equals minus 1. So here the sequence A sub n don't converge to 0. So, so here the converse is false. Let's summarize. We know that uh, the Cesaro mean is uh, C sub n equals the sum of uh, A sub k from 1 to n all over n. If limit of A sub n equals L, then we have the limit of C sub n equals L. And we know the converse is false. And we use the famous counterexample A sub n equals minus 1 on the power of n. Thank you for watching and see you next video.